Hello and welcome to this video. In this video we want to talk about state machines. I want to present one example of a state machine and specifically this is the example I'll be working with. This is a T-junction, um, assuming a system where um, you could drive, well, and arrows show the various directions in which people will drive. Um, for this example, we will just use a very simplistic system where we have just two lights, a red and a green. So logic zero, logic zero will be used to represent a red light and logic one will be used to represent a green light. So whenever, so in other words, we'll just use one logic. When that, lo when one, one bit, when that bit is zero, then the light will be red. When the bit is one, the light will be green. Specifically, um, various, how many lights do we need? Well, we need one light to control traffic that is going horizontally from east to west. We need one light, a different light that will control east to south. We need one light that will control west to east, one that goes west to south. And then we need two lights, one for south to east, south to west, and south to east. So in, in all, we need a total of six lights. So we need a li one light for west to south, one for south to west, one for south to east, one for west to east, one for east to west, and one for east to south. I think that covers the entire spectrum. Now we're going to run through a number of states and let's say state zero is a state where we have all red, all, st all the lights being red. In other words, all the six lights will have uh, logic zeros. And the idea behind that is let's say for some reason, so that could serve as our initialization um, state, or let's say for some reason um, we lose power to the system and the system suddenly comes on. Now when there is no power on street lights, we know that um, by default, drivers use their discretion, whoever has the right of way based on major roads, minor roads, they do go ahead and do the driving. However, traffic lights control traffic and in other words, it overrides everything that says right of way, the regular right of way without traffic lights is different from when you have traffic lights. So you don't want a, a situation where it's suddenly, um, the traffic light suddenly wakes up in a random state and passing one side and telling somebody else to stop, that could potentially cause accidents. So it's best to just simply tell everyone to stop. If someone decides to run that red light, it's highly unlikely an accident will occur because um, at least hopefully the others will decide to obey the red light. Nobody will think that, oh, okay, yeah, it's time for me to go. So we have an all red state. And then um, after that, let's say our state one, you could come up with a different set of states, but let's say state one is when um, south to east and south to, to west get a green light and so when south can go to east and south can go to west it means west can also come to south that is also a clear path so west to south south to west and south to east that's the first state second state of the traffic light controller will be west to south we still uh, still persists and then we have west going to east and east to west Okay, so those going straight from west to east can go through, those going straight from east to west can go through, but then since those are two level layers of traffic, it means those from west to south also are free to go through. So we we'll also give them a green light. State 3 caters for the one state we've not um, dealt with so far, or the one set of um, commuters we've not dealt with so far, that's those going from east to south. So if we're going to give those going from east to south right of way, that goes, those going east to south get a green light. That means those going from south to east can also get a green light. And those going straight from east to west can also get a green, green light. So we have east to west, east to south, and south to east. So those are the four states we'll be working with. And let's go ahead and come up with a state machine. Now I've gone ahead to create a state machine ahead of time so that, again, this video will not be unnecessarily long. So here we have various libraries we're making use of. Um, and then entity uh, traffic light controller. Now I'm going to implement this on a DE10 light board. So in order to do this, I've um, gone ahead to um, create uh, to create signals, um, create spots rather, that I intend to wire to the board. So you end up seeing things like LEDR, hex 0, hex 1. This could be called anything, but it would be a whole lot easier to just call it these names because that's the name that by default is in the QSF file and I wouldn't have to start changing names in the QSF file. Once I have the names assigned here, um, it, it just works by default uh, with the QSF file and I, I was trying to be a little lazy. Clock 50. I intend to use the 50 megahertz clock, one of the 50 megahertz clock on the board and use that to clock the um, traffic light controller so it just runs through. There'll be a, re a button for reset. Um, I use key one or key zero, I don't remember. I think key one, I use key one as the reset button. 
and then I created a counter. Actually, this I could comment out. I just left it there for debugging purposes when I was creating a test bench. Okay, so I created a test bench for this and tested this to be sure that it was working fine. So I created a, a counter. Um, I created an output for counter just for debugging purposes. Now, this um, variable counter, what I'm doing with it is that within my, I'll come back to some of these things here, within each of the um, states, within each of the states, I check the state of the counter. Um, so that's the initial state. I check the state of the counter, and whenever the counter is greater than or equal to a certain value, then and um, it was in a certain state, then we proceed to the next state. The idea is this for a traffic light controller, you don't want it to switch every time, you don't necessarily want it to switch every time there is a clock signal and an active clock transition. Instead, you might want it to switch when um, the after a certain amount of time. So, for example, you wanted to um, pass one side for, say, 30 seconds, and then after that, switch to the next side for, say, 20 seconds, and after that, switch to another side for, say, 15 seconds. Now, what I did in this code was I decided to create a variable. So, let me try to walk through this. Um, so, I used the counter to determine how long it will stay in each, in each of those states. So, uh, let me finish that thought. I used the counter, that's CNTTR, this variable. I use that to determine how long it stays in each state. So this output here was just to um, send the output to the test bench so that I could monitor how long it was staying in each state to be sure it was actually staying in each state. This was before I programmed it onto the D10 light board. In our architecture, define state type. So um, I define an initialization state, an all red state, then passing the, very, the other states that we had down here. I created an initialization stage init intentionally, and it stays in this initialization stage for just one second. It is quite similar to the all red states, and the only thing is initialization stage happens for just one second. The all red state is, is governed by the rules I used for determining how long it stays in each state. So we'll come, we'll see how long it stays in each of these states. We'll see how long it stays in each of the states a little lower. Let's go on with the definition over here. Let me scroll to the left. Some things are getting chopped off. Okay, so um, then we have a signal for present state, next state, and then I in initialize it to all red. Actually, I should initialize it to init. Um, again, VHDL is not type, it's not um, case sensitive, but yeah, I like to do that. Constant clock frequency. Clock frequency is 50 megahertz. Now, this is in here. Okay, so I'm going to scroll down here. So I created this three so that I could get a one hertz clock. Okay, so I created this three so I could get a one hertz clock. Because we're used to dealing with um, seconds in terms of one hertz, then I use a one hertz. I got a one hertz clock. So first of all, I created a, a constant um, um, clock frequency, which is 50,000 hertz. Then I create a signal, which is a counter for the clock, and then a signal clock, which is actually what I'm going to use to clock the state machine. So this will, is what I'll use to clock the state machine, not the clock 50. I'll use CLK to clock the state machine. And let's scroll down to the, I did a clock division. So if reset is zero, then reset the counter clock, reset the clock. But then on rising edge of clock 50, check counter clock and check whether it, whether it is less than clock frequency divided by two. If it is less than clock frequency divided by two, then um, increment the, the counter for the clock. Once it gets to clock frequency divided by two, then CLK is equal to not CLK. Note that I have to use clock frequency divided by two so that um, this will be exactly half of a period. This will happen at the half of every period so that after, at the full period would have had not clock twice, in which case that will give us a full period of CLK. So a full period of CLK will happen at clock frequency. Okay, full period of CLK will happen at clock frequency. So I'm doing this at clock frequency divided by two. Now, um, to ensure that this is actually doing what it should do, we should probably cast this as real and um, before doing division just so that we're um, certain of what exactly we're getting there, but it's not quite necessary because I know clock frequency is an even number. Dividing it by two will give an integer, cast it as integer, and this will be fine. So that is to get our one hertz clock. Let me go back up. Next, I created um, a constant called max counter. Max counter is the maximum amount of time I will let any of the states stay in. 
maximum amount of time I'll let any of the states stay in. And then I have a signal call counter, which is actually what is counting. So whenever it enters any state, counter starts running and it counts to a certain value and then it will cause the state to transit to the next state. Okay, it will cause it, the system to go to this FSM to go to the next state. So, signal um, counter is to hold the present count and to make um, make it stay in each state for a certain amount of time. Max counter is the maximum um, time it will stay in each state. Now, let me scroll down to where we took where we used that. Um, so, I may not come back to this. This is just what uh, makes it go to the next state. We saw this in the last video, so I'll let that be as is. Next state logic. Initialization stage. Once you're in the initialization stage, um, set your counter to zero. So this this particular line of code is the main reason why I created an initialization stage. So that I know for certain that whenever we start, um, your counter will be set to zero. I just wanted to be sure about that. It will set to zero. Next state, all red. So by the way, this happens if rising edge clock. So I am checking the state and deciding what the next state will be at the rising edge of each clock. That way, I am able to make it make sure that the counter that I am incrementing within this case statement only happens once every active um, clock edge. Okay, every active clock edge. When it is in the all red state, increment the counter. But remember, this value will not get assigned until the um, process pauses. So the fact that I have this here does not necessarily mean counter will get incremented. Immediately after this, we're going to check whether counter is greater than or equal to max counter divided by five. So whatever max counter is, I just divided the value by five. I didn't use a hard-coded value, but divide the max counter by five. Whatever answer you get there, um, compare counter to it. So max counter, we defined as 10 in this particular case. So 10 divided by two by five is two. So if counter is greater than two, Effectively, that's two seconds. If counter is greater than two, then reset the counter and let the next state be um, pass southwest, southeast, and west to south. And next um, rising edge of clock, that your next state now becomes your present state, and your FSM moves to the next state. So we do a similar thing in each of these states. First of all, increment the counter, then we check this. So if this is false, this incrementation will definitely happen. But if this is true, even though we told it to increment here, instead, this is what will get implemented. Because when the, um, the last um, co command to counter, the last assignment to counter, when this process pauses will be this and not that. So it will not increment the counter, but that's perfectly fine. So it will go to the next state, and then we have a similar thing in each state. To talk about the output logic, we need to go back up and see what else I put in the definition over here. Now, to make life easy for myself, I created a constant called LED all red. So I'm using the LEDs and I'm using the hex displays, the seven segment displays on the DA10 light board. I'm using those as my indicators of what particular state we're in. And in reality, we'll have things, we'll have the DA10 light board wired to a separate system that actually has the drivers for the actual um, traffic lights, but in this case, I'll just be indicating what state we're in effectively by using the LEDs and the um, seven segment displays. So, what um, this is the standard logic vector I'm going to write to all the LEDs when it's in the all red state. So, I just define it as a constant here so that when I want to write to LEDs, I could just simply tell it write LED all red and it will write the right state. Um, write LED southwest, southeast, west, south, and you could write this value in there. So this makes life a little com um, convenient for me. And if I wanted to change what the LED is, I could just easily come here and modify any of these and not have to look for wherever I made use of it in the code. Then also, um, to also make my life somewhat easy, I decided to define constants for displaying things on the seven segment display. So if I wanted to display zero on the seven segment display, this is what I will need. To display one, this is what I will need. Now, there's a long list here, and I did not use many of these in this particular code. However, I have this defined here, and um, sometimes when I'm creating a new project, I just copy this and paste it into that, um, into that project. Is it a good idea to have all of these in here even though you're not using them? Mm, well, what is making use, a, this is a waste. And if I, um, the compiler typically will not implement this in hardware. 
so that this will not take up memory if i'm correct this will not take up memory in your fsm so that it really doesn't matter too much but in your code in your and VHDL file, you just increment the number of, you increase the number of lines of code you're going to use. There are several of them in here, but then um, having this like uh, kind of as my master list, so zero to nine, A, B, C, D, as many as I could do all the way to Z. I don't have any for letter I because it was easy to implement. There are none for M, none for W. There are a couple of others, X, that are also difficult to implement with just seven segments. But others are relatively easy to write. Z, we just assume looks like number two. S, we assume looks like the number um, five. So this value is exactly the same as what you have for uh, five. You see five is highlighted when I double clicked on S. So it's exactly the same value. Z is exactly the same value as two. That's perfectly fine. For O, I decided to make O, lowercase O, so that we could use that to differentiate it from zero. So it's different from what you have with zero. So all of these I defined here. Then as I did for LEDs, I now define for hex five. If I, so in the state all red, then I have the hex 5 all red constant I created, which I want to be blank, and I created all of this here. Now, is this necessary? The answer is no. Just like um, this was actually not necessary. I could define all of this in without making them constants. I could define all of this in my output logic state, but I decided to define them here. My own choice. Decided to define them here. Um, so that if I wanted to change the values, I just change them in here. It's probably just a waste of space, probably a waste of time. So what I did was, in all red, I just enabled blank in the fifth um, blank in the fifth hex display, then STOP, and then blank here. Now, notice it is convenient to say STOP, so that just by looking at this, I can tell what I am writing. I don't have to bother about each one of these. So I didn't have to define this constants, but here, one is less likely I'm make, going to make a mistake because I use a set of constants that are tried and trusted, I've used several times. And just by looking at this, I can tell what exactly it is I wanted to write on my hex displays. Here, what I'm going to do for the rest of the states, the, um, if you want, most significant hex display, I use that to refer to um, those going from east. So the hex 5 is on the east of the board, if you want. The hex 0 is on the west of the board. Then the 2 in the center, hex 2 and hex 3, um, I make, make that control the south. So. Um, yeah, so you price the displays. Um, blank means that I'm not passing those who are going from east to west. Reverse arrow kind of tries to show an arrow that from east you can go to the south. Then this tries to show us that from south you can go to the east. And this tries to show us that from um, south you can go to the west. Those on the west don't get any green light at all. Next date, east to west gets no green light. Um, east to south gets a green light. Um, oh, sorry. East to west gets a dash. That means, yes, they get a green light. So east to west gets a green light. East to south gets a green light. South gets no green light. Um, west, sorry, east, yeah, west to south gets a red light. And then west to east gets a green light. So that's what I try to do here. And you try to get this. You see, your east gets no green light. Um, south to east get no green light. Then this is south to west, west to south and west to east. So that's what I did here, just to try to display this on the hex display. Um, it's not the perfect um, display on the hex display, but then, well, it kind of works. And then we have our output um, logic. So here, literally all I did was just use the constants I defined above. And um, yeah, so I know that it definitely works. So initialization state, I'm using the all red outputs. Um, the all red outputs, I use the same thing there then in this particular state, I use this in there. So just to try to make sure I don't make any mistakes, I try to modularize my work um, and make it abs abstracted in, in a way that I feel be, would be nice. For the other states, we have the all red st states. I didn't show that here. When others, again, we go to the all red state and we don't stay there at all. So we just go to, or we just, uh, at the next active clock transition, it will go to the next state. Next state is all red. Okay, and this is this line I just used to, and the signal counter, I wrote it to the output um, counter. Now this, like I said, we don't need anymore, so I could actually just comment it out. Maybe I should just comment it out before I compile this. Okay, so I'll comment that out because I don't need that anymore. I won't bother simulating the test bench, um, largely because I'll need to um, comment this out and then where I defined it lower, um, I'll need to bother about that, but I won't bother doing that in this case. 
um, traffic light controller dot QSF. Um, this is what we have here. This is your master D10 um, list. So I, I just basically I copy things from here and paste inside the tra um, traffic controller dot QSF. Traffic controller dot QSF. I've taken liberty of pasting in all the code I need. That's for instance seven segment displays. I just copy them and paste them in, paste them, them in here because I use the same names hex zero hex one hex two. I don't need to worry about changing anything in here for all those hex. Um, same thing for LEDs. I use LEDR, so I don't need to change anything there. Now the clock, I need to. Um, I need to. Okay, so this is the the keys. Initially, I used. Okay, so I can take this off now. Initially, I used um, key zero as the clock, and then I used um, the reset button key one as the reset button. But I'm not using this anymore, so I commented th that out. I'll just leave that in there, not because I need it. And then I now use the 50 megahertz clock here, named it clock 50. So that's our KSF file. Um, I don't think I've changed that in any way. And now we can go to quarters and traffic light controller. We can go ahead and compile this. Um, yes, I compiled earlier on, but I just modified it. I took out one of the ports and now I'll recompile this. Once this is recompiled, we will um, um, program this onto the board and um, see how it operates. Okay, so it's done compiling. Um, next, let's go ahead and view the board. I want to turn on the board and then I'll program it. Okay, so that's our board. And let me go ahead and program it. I do apologize, this, the LEDs are, um, well, they're kind of causing a bit of a glare on the screen. So sorry about that. Um, that's my programmer. Um, let me just make sure we can see both. Okay, go ahead and start the programming. Uh, okay, it failed. Why did it fail? Start. Okay, good. So it's done. Um, now take a look at the board. Just keep your eye on the board and see that it has gone okay. So it's now in the first state. So I'm certain the LED, whatever LED is off, um, is not red. Okay, so I think I said that differently. Um, in the origin, in, in the first um, image, I showed that logic zero is um, a red, logic one is a green. Actually, because we're using red LEDs, I decided to use logic one as a red and logic zero as a green. So every LED that is off is the LED, it shows the state that is being passed. Now you could go ahead and um, see how long is it staying in each state. Um, I'll try to pull up the code be behind. Um, so in the first state, we, okay, in the all rest state, so I'll go ahead and reset the board shortly. Um, whenever we're in, we reset the board, it should stay there for about two seconds where we um, okay, so max counter is 10. So when we reset the board, it should be here for about two seconds. Um, if you count the initialization stage as well, it could probably be about three seconds. So two to three seconds, um, that's in the very first stage. And after that, in the second stage, max counter is 10. So two times 10 over three should approximately give us six. Um, well, that would be six because I didn't use the seal command. Um, in fact, I should have casted this as an integer, but it, not to worry, I can cast this as an integer. and. So this should give us six. So it could stay in the next state for about six seconds. It should stay in the third state for 10 seconds, in the fourth state for five seconds thereabouts. So I'll reset the, um, um, I'll reset the state machine. Um, that's by key one. So I'll reset it. I'll, okay, so once I press it, once I release it, then I can start counting. One, okay, there. Oh, so sorry about that. Yeah, so next is nice and resting. Let let's do that again. Release that. Okay, so that's it. there seems to be a bug somewhere that we need to take a look at. But then in this stage, you could count four, five, six, thereabouts, and it goes to the next state two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I should make sure I should mention that I do not have a clock with me. I'm hoping I have an idea about the amount of time a um, clock stays. Um, but you could go ahead and just take a look at this yourself and um, see that it actually does count. Um, it actually does stay in each state for approximately the about the amount of time that we expect it to be in that state. So that will be it for this video, and that will be it for this this series of videos I've been doing on counters. Well, it started from counters and ended at state machines, which um, is only is only a logical progression. Um, you can stay. To, you can subscribe to this channel and um, hit the bell icon. And when I put out another video on VHDL, 
um, you will see it. The next video I'll probably put out in maybe a week or two will probably be on um, VGAs, but I'm not sure yet about my time. I'm not sure if I'll have the time to put it out there, but hopefully I'll be able to do that. Um, I do read comments. I do read each one of the comments. So if you have a question, you could put it in the comments. If you have a request, you could put it in the comments. I do read each one of them. Problem is with my schedule, I don't always get to them very quickly, but I will try to respond to each comment and I'll try to respond um, sooner rather than later. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one.